What if passing was removed from the NHL? Nail Connor McDavid is on pace for over 100 assists in a single season. The first player to do that in a very long time. I believe only like three players have ever done that in NHL history. Obviously Gretzky and Lemieux. And I cannot remember who the third guy is. It might be Bobby Orr, honestly. But regardless, what if I removed passing from the NHL entirely? Meaning that the best players in the world would only shoot and they would never pass the puck. They became complete puck hogs where they did not want to share the biscuit whatsoever. So what I've done is I've basically gone through the best players in the world from like an 88 overall and above and I changed their tendencies to shoot first completely. That means they should not be getting any assists on the season and they should be strictly shooting the puck on the net. And we are going to see how that affects the simulation over a five year sim. So let's go ahead. Let's see what happens and let's see who are the biggest puck hogs in the NHL now. Basically, what I've done is I've gone through pretty much every single team, and if you had a 90 or above player, I changed their tendency to shoot first, and if you did not, if your best player was not above a 90 overall and above, then I just did your two best players and made them a shoot first caliber player like Lindholm and Rasmus Anderson. So pretty much every single superstar in the NHL will not want to pass the puck and instead shoot it on net. Now, one of the reasons reasons that I did want to do this is I did want to see if the shoot pass slider in this game actually meant a lot. Like if I put it all the way up for pass first, would they never shoot the puck and never get any goals? Or if they were completely shoot first, would they not get any assists? So we're definitely going to find that out here in this video. Hopefully it does stay true to what it says it does. And we see all the best players in the world only shooting and not getting any apples. Now at the end of season number one, the Vancouver Canucks are going to end up finishing as the best team in the entire NHL as they went 53, 26, and 3, followed by the Minnesota Wild. They won 47 games. Toronto was up there 48 wins New Jersey the Red Wings who just beat Chicago did anybody see Patrick Kane's overtime storybook winner over the Blackhawks that was crazy low-key he was kind of cherry-picking but I mean it's Patrick Kane he can do pretty much whatever he wants to do now at the bottom we do have unfortunately the San Jose Sharks the Columbus Blue Jackets and the Philadelphia Flyers who in real life are not doing this bad but I mean overall they never simulate very well in this game Connor McDavid is going to go ahead and lead the entire NHL in scoring with 118 points unfortunately I don't think the shoot pass sliders mean that much as if we take a look here everybody still has a lot of assists 118 points. Mitch Marner had 113. Dry Settle was up there. Matthews, Patrick Kane, Nylander, Barkov, and Kaprizov. Now on the goal side, Bedard is going to lead with 66 goals on the season, followed by Kaprizov, 63. McDavid had 60. Robertson, 59. Ovi had 58. Breadman was up there, 57. So it does look like the goal scoring is a bit higher, but at the end of the day, they are still getting a lot of apples. So I don't know what else I could really do to make these guys never get assists, but I guess it's it is what it is. Defensively, defensemen are still going to get a lot of apples. Quinn Hughes had 68 on the season. Also 86 points leading all D-man. Followed by Eric Carlson's 85. Josh Morrissey only had 7 goals and 71 points. Kale McCarr was up there. Dougie Hamilton had 72. For goalies, Thatcher Demko is going to lead and wins with 46. Followed by Hellebuck's 39. Tristan Jari had 39. And for the shutout side, UC Saros will lead with 6 shutouts on the year. I don't know if you guys feel the same way. I kind of feel like goalies are right now we're very mid like no goalie is really taking the reins as the best in the world Vassy's taking a slight step back Igor as well as well Sorokin Hellebuck is having a good season but he doesn't have that record or the, the pedigree to be the best goalie in the world it's just a very weird time for goaltenders. I feel like there's nobody that's really the best right now. And this is our playoff bracket for year number one. So let's see who goes on and makes the Stanley Cup Finals. And in the Stanley Cup Final, we have the Minnesota Wild up against the Detroit Red Wings. Like, what is this matchup? Very weird and unpredictable matchup. But I guess at the end of the day, that is the NHL. So let's see if Patrick Kane can win another Stanley Cup. Or will Kirill Kaprizov lead the Wild to, I believe, their very very first Stanley Cup in franchise history. And the Red Wings are going to get it done as they pretty much steamrolled the Wild in five games in the Stanley Cup Finals, meaning that Patrick Kane is going to get his fourth Stanley Cup of his NHL career, cementing himself as the greatest American-born player in the history of the game. I mean, eventually, it will probably end up being Matthews, but right now, it's Patrick Kane, goddammit. As I actually saw on the broadcast last night, Patrick Kane has an A in Detroit. When did that happen? When did he get an A? I don't even remember. 
as Alex Dabrinkit is going to take home the con Smythe, 11 goals and 29 points for the Cat. I mean, since he had nine goals and I believe like the first week of hockey this season, he scored like 10 since then. As unfortunately for the Wild, they are not going to be able to raise the cup for the first time in their franchise's history, but they will see it raised here in the state of hockey in Minnesota. As the captain, Dylan Larkin, will come lift the Stanley Cup for the very first time in his career as the Detroit Red Wings are back to their winning ways here in year number one. Kirill Kaprizov is going to end up leading the entire playoffs in goal scoring with 17 goals and points with 29, tied with Alex Dabrinkit. Boldy had 28, also 13 goals. Zuccarello was up there. Patrick Kane had a pretty good playoff run. I mean, he's called Showtime for a reason. Dylan Larkin had 21. Connor McDavid's going to end up taking home the Ted Lindsay, the Art Ross, and Hart Trophy, while Bedsy is going to take home that Maurice Richard, the Norris, the Quinn Hughes. Obviously, the Con Smythe will go to Cat. Freddie Anderson is going to win the Vesna, and the Selkie will also go to Connor McDavid who is the best player in the world today. You know, I am slightly disappointed in the fact that players are still putting up a lot of assists, especially the ones that I messed with. I don't know. Maybe I should have lowered their passing rating all the way down and made everybody a sniper. So I guess that's on me. But we are still going to go ahead here and see how differently that affects the simulation. I mean, we had Minnesota and Detroit in the Stanley Cup final. You know how weird of a Stanley Cup final matchup that is? That is something you only see in literally a video game. Kind of like Toronto making the Stanley Cup final. Now, at the end of the second season, season, the Toronto Maple Leafs are going to finish as the best team in the NHL, winning 52 games, followed by the Boston Bruins who won 51. Winnipeg was up there at 49. Dallas also won 50 games. Nobody else did. Tampa Bay was good. Carolina, the defending champs, and the Red Wings won 47, so they are still a threat. At the bottom, we have Arizona, San Jose, the Los Angeles Kings. Well, I mean, for a while this season, we're doing very, very bad, but they seem to have kind of turned things around a little bit. The Devils are bad. The Rangers were down here as well as the Oilers missing the playoffs. What is going on in the NHL this season? William Nylander is going to end up leading the entire NHL in scoring with 121 points, followed by Mitch Marner's 115. Nikita Kucherov had 114. Matthews had 114. Pasternak was up there. McDavid's always good. Dreisaitl had 107. Brad Marchand was up there. The absolute rat that he is. Kar Kirill Kaprizov is going to lead the NHL in goal scoring with 70 goals on the season. Al Connor at 65, but Dard was up there with 63. Ovi had 60. Kucherov 57. Line was up there. Had a very good year with 56 tucks. No Austin Matthews in sight. I guess he's not the greatest goal scorer in the world. Defensively, Eric Carlson is going to lead all D-man. He had 27 goals and 91 points, followed by Josh Morrissey's 88. Kale McCarr had 82. Also 30 goals on the year. A very good season by defenseman. Victor Hedman was up there. Carlson, Yossi was a minus 20. Jake Ottinger will lead all goalies and wins with 44, followed by Vassy. 42, Samsonov at 42, and Hellebuck 41. And for the shutout side, Jake Ottinger will also lead with seven, so he's most likely going to win that Vesna. Bobrovsky at six, Vili Husso six, and Freddie Anderson five. Let me know in the comments below if you guys would like to see me create the greatest goalie of all time. Goalies are way too mid right now for me. Now for the playoffs in year number two, here are our matchups, so let's simulate and go ahead and see who makes the Stanley Cup finals. And believe it or not, in the Stanley Cup finals we have the vancouver canucks up against the toronto maple leafs the battle of the choke artists who is going to choke first vancouver having riots in the stanley cup finals or toronto in a game seven if this goes seven games i'm picking vancouver all the way but regardless Let's see who goes on and wins the Stanley Cup here in year number two. And the Vancouver Canucks are not even going to need a game seven as they beat the Toronto Maple Leafs in six games in the Stanley Cup finals. No riots in Vancouver. There might be some in Toronto, honestly, if they ever made the cup final and lost. I feel like that city would go absolutely crazy. And Toronto is going to prove that they are the king of kings when it comes to choking, especially in the playoffs. Now, the Conn Smythe will go to Elias Pettersson. 12 goals and 35 points. A very dynamic playoff run for the best player on the Vancouver Canucks. I mean, he's a little better than Quinn Hughes, in my opinion. But Quinn Hughes is definitely better or closer to being the best at his position compared to Pettersson. But that's not really his fault. As the Stanley Cup finally gets to be raised in Vancouver for the very first time in their franchise's history. As here comes the captain, Quinn Hughes to lift the cup for the Vancouver Canucks. What a special, special moment as he's a first-time champ as well as their franchise as they have taken home the Stanley Cup here in year number two. 
Elias Pedersen is going to end up leading the entire playoffs and scoring with 35 points, followed by Matthews, who had 30, also 17 goals. Mitch Marner had 30, JT Miller 28, and 18 goals for JT Miller, beating out Matthews. That is crazy. Nylander had 27 points, Kuzmenko 25, Brock Besser 24. Nylander is going to win the Ted Lindsay, Art Ross, and Hart Trophy, while the Maurice Richard will go to Kaprizov, the Norris, the Josh Morsey, the Conn Smythe to Pedersen. Jake Ottinger will obviously win the Vesna and the Selkie is going to go to Connor McDavid yet again. Now, at the end of the third season, the Edmonton Oilers are going to dominate going 55, 18, and 9, 119 points. The best team in the NHL, followed by Colorado and Tampa Bay, who also won 50 games. Seattle was up there. Toronto, after a disappointing cup final, are back up there. Rangers were good. Winnipeg, LA, Buffalo at the bottom. We do have Philly, Calgary, and New York. Pretty much all poverty franchises outside of the Flyers. Connor McDavid is going to dominate, leading the entire NHL in points with 140, followed by Leon Dreisaitl's 130, Pasternak had 112, Ovi was up there at 110, Kaprizov 109, Braden Point had 107, Marshawn 105, Bradman was up there now for the goal side, Kirill Kaprizov, the goal scoring machine, gonna have 73 goals on the season. I've never seen him score more than he has in this simulation, so maybe that's the trick to making him do good. Dry settle at 64, McDavid 63, Ovi had 60, Bedard was up there at 55, Troy Terry 55. Where is Matthews, honestly? I mean, I didn't mess with his shoot pass tendency that much. I think it was at like three and now it's zero, but he's not. He scored 42 goals. That's it. I mean, he had 100 points and more assists than goals, which is kind of weird. Yet again, Eric Carlson is going to lead all defensemen in scoring this time with 88 points on the season, followed by Kale McCars, 86. John Carlson had 85. And Roman Yossi, 82. Everybody else really didn't do that great, I guess. Rasmus Dallin did have 27 goals, though. For goalies, Stuart Skinner gonna lead and wins with 44. Followed by Hellebox, 43. Samsonov had 41. And UC Saros had 40. And on the shutout side, Essie had the most at 8. Followed by Mers Lincoln, 6. Bobrovsky at 6. And UC Saros, 5. Shout out to uh, Vasilevsky, the Conn Smythe winner, the Vesna winner, and the two time Stanley. The cup winner. I'd probably still take him in a playoff game over any other goalie in the entire NHL, but it's a real tricky spot, honestly. And here we go yet again. This is our year number three playoff bracket. And in the Stanley Cup finals, we have the Winnipeg Jets up against the Pittsburgh Penguins, who could be on one last dance here with Sidney Crosby. Obviously, in real life, they don't have a shot of making the Stanley Cup finals, but here in NHL 24, they could get it done. Win Crosby one more Stanley Cup, or will the Winnipeg Jets go on and win their first Stanley Cup in their franchises? history. Sadly for any Crosby or Pens fans, the Winnipeg Jets are just going to completely run through them in the Stanley Cup Finals in four games as they sweep them, taking home their very first Stanley Cup in their franchise's history as they beat them down. They pounded them. They took them to Pound Town, if you know what I mean. If you know, you know. If you don't, you don't. As the Winnipeg Jets are really going to celebrate for the very first time in the franchise's history. I mean, Gary Bettman said he was going to meet in Winnipeg for possibly moving the team again. Mark Scheifele is the Conn Smythe winner. Eight goals and 28 points. But I mean, he'll completely turn a blind eye to the Arizona Coyotes who play in a goddamn high school hockey rink. I mean, that's not at all embarrassing for the NHL, right? But yeah, screw Winnipeg. Get them out of, get another team out of Canada on Honestly, Gary Bettman. Great job, brother. Great job. There it is. The Stanley Cup being raised in Pittsburgh, not in Winnipeg. So Gary Bettman is loving this. As the captain of all captains, Adam Lowry is going to come select the Stanley Cup or lift it. As the Winnipeg Jets have gone all the way here in season number three. Old man Sidney Crosby is going to have a hell of a playoff run. 11 goals and 28 points. The most points in the entire playoffs. Followed by Mark Scheifele's 28. Kyle Connor had 27. Marner 24. Malkin had 23. Also 15 goals. Again, McDavid is going to win the Ted Lindsay, Art Ross, and Hart Trophy. While Kaprizov takes home the Maurice Richard. The Norris will go to John Carlson. The Conn Smythe. Of course, to Mark Scheifele. Vassy will win the Vesda. And the Selkie will go back to Connor McDavid. He's going to win it every year. I feel like EA just chooses. It's kind Kind of like in 2K, the Defensive Player of the Year award, the same players pretty much win the Selkie and the DPOYs every year in my simulations. I don't know if it's just me and I'm cursed or I don't know what it is. Now, at the end of season number four, the Detroit Red Wings, who did go on and win a Stanley Cup in the simulation, I believe in year number one, they are going to finish as the best team in the entire league going 51, 19, and 12, followed by the Boston Bruins. Seattle was up there, Dallas and Colorado. Tampa Bay was pretty good as well as the Vancouver Canucks at the bottom. We pretty much have the same teams in Calgary 
Arizona and Montreal. Again, Connor McDavid's going to lead the entire NHL in scoring this time with 131 points, followed by Patrick Kane's 121. Matthews had 119, finally up there. Matthew Kachuk had 116. Nylander, Marchand, Jack Hughes had a very good season with 109 and 71 goals. Did he lead? No, Connor Bedard, as an 18 year old, had 72 goals on the season. One more than Jack Hughes. Connor McDavid did have 67. OV 58. Kaprizov had 56. Matthews 56. The Brinkett was up there. For defenseman, Quinn Hughes is going to lead 86 points, followed by Kale McCars 83 and 25 goals. Dougie Hamilton had 81. Charlie McAvoy 81. Hamilton also had 31 goals, which I believe is going to lead all demon. It is. He usually scores a lot of goals in the simulation as a defenseman. Now for goalies, for wins, Thatcher Demko will lead again. This time with 44 on the season, followed by Bob's 42, Ottinger had 42, and Philip Grubauer had 41. Now on the shutout side, Demko will lead with six on the season. Mrazek had five, Vili Husso five, and Philip Grubauer had five as well. See what I mean? These are three mid goaltenders leading in shutouts. This is our playoff bracket in year number four. So let's see who goes on and makes the Stanley Cup finals. And in the Stanley Cup final, we have two powerhouses between the Colorado Avalanche and the Boston Bruins here in the finals. Boston has not won a Stanley Cup since 2011, a very long time ago at this point, even though that makes me feel old in Colorado. Well, they literally just won it a few seasons ago. But who is going to take it home here in year number four? And the Boston Bruins are going to get it done in six games over the Colorado Avalanche as they pretty much destroyed them. I mean, it was somewhat of a close series, but they were by far the better team. And they're going to win their very first cup since 2011 when the riots happened in Vancouver. I mean, they made two Stanley Cup finals since then, lost both of them. So, I mean, it was about time they finally clutched it up here in the finals as the Conn Smythe is going to go to David Pasternak. 12 goals and 30 points for Mr. Pasta. I mean, what a cool nickname that guy has. I don't know who created that, but salute to them. Also, not a bad looking guy, I guess. I don't know if that was sus or not. Regardless, here is the Stanley Cup. About to be raised in Colorado, in Ball Arena. Give your balls a tug. As the rat, Brad Marchand, coming to lift the Stanley Cup for the second time in his career as the Beantown Boston Bruins have gone all the way in season number four. David Pasternak is going to lead the NHL in scoring with 30 points, followed by Miko Rantanen's 27. Brad Marchand had 27. McKinnon was up there at 10 goals and 23 points. Matthew Patra had 5 goals and 21 points. Landy had 20. McAvoy, 19. McDavid had 18. Only 12 games played, though. Again, McDavid's going to dominate Ted Lindsay, Art Ross, and Hart Trophy. Bedsy's going to win the Maurice Richard, the Norris, the Quinn Hughes, the Conn Smythe to Pasta. Jake Ottinger will win another Vesna and the Selkie, of course. Actually, no, it's going to go to Alexander Barkov. I'm very surprised by this. Now, at the end of the final season, again, Toronto is going to finish as the best team in the NHL, winning 55 games, followed by the Anaheim Ducks, who were surprisingly very, very good. They won 50. Carolina was up there. The Red Wings, Tampa Bay, Ottawa, Minnesota, and the Oilers. Dreisaitl is going to lead the entire NHL in scoring with 129 points, followed by McDavid's 127. Kucherov had 113. Jack Hughes was up there. Braden Point. Breadman had 105. Johnny Hockey, 104. 104 because he is literally reviving his career from the dead. Trevor Zeger, shout out to him, 53 goals and 98 points for the former cover boy. Now for goals, McDavid is going to lead with 66, followed by Jason Robertson, 63. Braden Point had 62. Kreisov was up there, dry side out a good season. Bread made Ovi at 54. Eric Carlson and Kale McCarr are going to tie for the most points by defenseman with 73. Carlson did have more goals at 27. Quinn Hughes also had 73. Victor Hedman, 73. So that's a four-way tie for the lead. I wonder who's going to get the Vesna. I feel like it's going to be Carlson. He did have the most the most goals out of anybody. I wonder who's going to end up getting the Norris. They all tie for the most points, but Carlson did have 27 goals, which is the most, so I feel like it's going to be him. Ilya Samsonov is going to have the most wins at 42, followed by Vili Husso's 41, and Freddie Anderson also 41 now on the shutout side. Georgiev and Demko are going to tie for the lead at 7 apiece. And here we go. This is our final playoff bracket of the entire video, so let's see who goes on and makes the Stanley Cup Finals. And in the Stanley Cup Finals, again, we have the Colorado Avalanche up against the Boston Bruins. Boston obviously getting the better last season. So let's see if the Avs can get revenge beating Boston in the Finals or will the Bruins 
end up winning two Stanley Cups in this simulation. And the Colorado Avalanche will end up getting the revenge over the Beantown Boston Bruins in six games in the Stanley Cup Finals as they beat them, getting revenge over last season when they lost in the Cup Finals. And I mean, I guess it wouldn't be an NHL 24 simulation without at least Tampa Bay or Colorado winning a Stanley Cup as they are going to get their second since 2022. Kale McCarr is going to end up taking home the Conn Smythe. Only two goals, but 21 points, which is a very good playoff run by him. In real life, he did end up winning the Conn Smythe for them. So now he's got two to his resume, cementing himself as maybe a top five D-man of all time. I mean... That is a hell of a resume for Kale McCarr. As the cup is going to be raised in Boston, but not for the Bruins as the Avs have done it again. Here comes Landy coming to select the Stanley Cup for the second time in his career. As in the fifth and final season, the Avalanche are going to win the Stanley Cup. Now for the entire playoff run, Brad Marchand is going to have the most points at 33, followed by Artemi Panarin's 29, also 18 goals. That'll never happen in real life. This guy does not show up like that. Pasternak at 28, Kucherov 25, Braden Point had 25, Charlie McAvoy was up there, Jack Eichel had 22, DeBrusque 21. Connor McDavid is going to take on the Ted Lindsay and Maurice Richard, while Leon Dreisettle will win the Art Ross and Hart Trophy. The Norris, the Kale McCarr, the Consmyth also to McCarr, as the Vesna will go to Sam Sonoff and the Selkie to Anze Kopitar. And that is going to do it for this video, boys. If you enjoyed it, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Also, turn on notifications so you don't miss a single live stream or video that I put out. And I'm not going to lie, I'm slightly disappointed that the best players were not absolute puck hogs and they got a lot of assists in the simulation. I guess I could have done more. I could have made them all snipers and removed their passing rating all the way down to a 36. So I apologize for that. Hopefully the video was still very entertaining. But we saw mixed results. Some new teams did win the Stanley Cup. Obviously, Colorado did also win the Stanley Cup, which is pretty much happens in every single simulation. Let me know in the comments below what else you would like to see next. Thank you all for watching, and until next time, don't be silly. Wrap your willy.